Austin Stoddard here, excited to be with you. Uh, very excited to be with you, actually. Today's topic is gonna be fantastic. I'm absolutely thrilled about it. Uh, it's the seven habits, let me say that again, seven habits of highly effective real estate agents. For those of you that know me, know that I've been in this industry for over 20 years and uh, in the process, uh, also launched a podcast five years ago and have interviewed uh, going on 300 and close to 350 different professionals that uh, are extremely successful, many of whom right, are leaders in our industry. And uh, from that, there have been some absolute themes that have shown up as to uh, what makes a successful agent and what does not. And uh, today, I'm very, very excited to be with you all and have the ability to go through and really distill down for you some of the things that you need to be doing if you're ever going to create not just some success, but lots of success. Uh, so if you are watching this live, I would just encourage you to put in the comments live. Uh, what that will do is it will trigger it to where more people will be notified to watch it. Um, if you are listening to the podcast afterwards, I would encourage you uh, to join us inside of the Successful Real Estate Agents Facebook group. Um, inside that group, uh, we not only give you live stream trainings like this, uh, but we also give you many of the resources, many of the one page documents that, that allow you to walk away from an experience like this, a training like this, and have a punch list of exactly what you need to be doing, what you can be doing to grow yourself. So again, if you're not yet a member of that group, join us. If you are in the group, let us know that you're here. And I look forward to interacting with you as we move forward. I'm actively watching that right now to make sure that we are showing up live in that group. So anyway, excited to be with you all. Uh, for those of you that don't know my story, um, I am a builder. Uh, I was a land developer, home builder from 2001, approximately 2001, 2002 until 2009. Uh, and in that process, I learned a lot about building. And uh, today, um, this is a theme that we are going to talk about, which is how to build, how to build um, successful habits and which habits you should be building. So I'm just going to let um, everybody know here really quickly that we are live. Okay, very good, guys. Um, hey, Kendall White, what's up, my friend? Great to see you. Thanks for the birthday wishes, by the way, not just from Kendall, but from everybody who gave me warm wishes yesterday. It was a special day. Uh, I turned the corner on another great year of life. Woke up, fired up yesterday and today even more so. Uh, with all of your love and support, uh, encouraging me um, in the work that I'm doing. So thank you for all the wonderful partnerships and friendships that I have built. So with that being the case, um, let's go ahead and dive in. I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna share with you my iPad screen. You should be able to see this here shortly. And uh, this is gonna allow me to really draw out in front of you uh, these, seven these seven habits. So let's get right in. I know your time is valuable as is mine. So let's get to it. Okay, now I apologize in advance. Although I don't have a doctorate degree, although I'm not a physician, one might think that I am when you look at my handwriting. At least that's what my lovely wife tells me. <laughs> She's very good at telling me the truth. And uh, my handwriting isn't always the best, but I'm gonna do my very best today to, to give you something very legible that you can read. Okay, so I'm gonna jump right in here. Habit number one that I see in the most successful real estate agents in the country. Okay, now I'm gonna put these as if I'm talking to you specifically, but these are the attributes that I've seen. Habit number one, build yourself, okay? There, nobody is great for long if they're not in constant growth mode. The world is changing at way too fast of a pace for you nor I to ever think that we have it figured out. In fact, I remember my the president of my university, the first college I attended, he was speaking to the business students. Some of you may recognize his name. His name is David Bednar. <clears throat> he spoke some words that actually didn't resonate with me until later in life. He said these words. He said, by the time you leave this institution, go out into the workforce, much of the world will have changed. And so... I don't want you to focus so much on what you're learning, but I want you to focus on these two things. Number one, I want you to focus on learning how to learn, and I want you to focus on learning to love to learn. Because if you love to learn and you know how to learn, nothing can stop you, okay? So when it comes to building yourself, 
you must always be growing. You must always be moving yourself forward. If you've ever noticed, some agents are like a one hit wonder. They figure out one thing, they're super good at it, and they stop learning, they stop growing. And as a result, they end up not continuing to progress in their career. Now there's two areas that I believe that you need to be building yourself. Number one and number two. Okay, the first one is personal growth. The other one is professional growth. Okay, what's the difference you ask? Personal growth is really centered on growing your mindset. Growing the, the belief that you can help people, the confidence. I shared this uh, with a friend of mine earlier today. I said, people are buying your confidence to solve their problems. And if you're not confident that you can solve their problems, then guess what? They're probably not going to be in business with you. And the only way to grow your confidence is to grow yourself. What I mean by this is regularly reading, and I recommend as much as 10 pages per day. Now, maybe you're an audible person, you prefer to listen. You need to be in a good book every day. I'm not talking about Harry Potter. I'm, not ta I'm talking about books that actually grow you, personal development books, right? In fact, this is a great time for me to probably share the story of one of my greatest mentors of all time, the late Stephen R. Covey, whose work, The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, inspired today's episode, right? My hat goes off to Dr. Covey who uh, is in a better place right now. Uh, but Dr. Covey uh, developed The Seven Habits. And uh, he, uh, he, his first book, The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, was the first book that I really fell in love with. It was the first book where I really started to listen to it all the time. I really started to invest in myself because of that book. So again, if you're not personally developing yourself, your mindset, getting sharper, getting better, getting brighter, then you, if you're having success, then it's going to be short-lived. If you're not having success, it's going to be a mirage and you're never going to reach it. Okay. The second area is professional development, building yourself professionally. That means gaining a skill set, getting better at what you do for a living. It could be, be better at operations. It could be better at sales and marketing. It could be better at the accounting side. It could be better at leadership. It could be better at really leverage and scale. But you need to always be getting better. The fact that you're here listening to this, whether you're just listening to the audio or whether you're here participating in the live stream, tells me something about you, that you're interested in growing yourself and you're growing yourself both personally and professionally. Okay, let's move on to step number two. Now, let me back up really quickly because we're talking about habits. Each of these, we should be spending some time on every single day. So if you were to look at your calendar, right, part of the promise of this broadcast was that you do more of these and less of everything else. More of these things, less of everything else. And your life and your business will get more and more simple and more and more powerful, more and more productive, and better. Okay. So you ought to have a habit every day of building yourself. I recommend before you get heavy into email is you get in and you read and you study. Maybe you do that while you're exercising. Maybe you do that uh, while you're like first thing when you get in the office, but building yourself on a daily regular basis is going to be critical for you. Okay. So that's the first habit. The second habit is to build others. Now, what I mean by this specifically isn't just adding value to them. It's actually it's, well, it is, but it's hard to build value in other people when you're not in conversation with them, okay? So this is the principle that I want you to take from this is that conversion happens in conversation, okay? So what I mean by that is if you aren't regularly having conversations with other people, then you are missing out because the ability for you to actually convert other people to using you as a provider will not happen unless you get to a conversation. Now, I believe that there is a place for branding. There is a place for giving away value similar to what I'm doing here. But whatever it is that you're doing on a regular basis, it needs to be driving conversations 
okay? People have a hard time doing business with someone who they've never had a conversation with. And so everything that you need, that, that, that you're doing in your business to grow your business really needs to be focused on how do I get into more and more conversations with other people, okay? So that's, and in those conversations, you're looking to say, how can I build this person? How can I add value to them? How can I bring information to them that they need? How do I not just guess at what they need, but how do I ask them questions about what they're looking for and then deliver on that, okay? So you're gonna build yourself, number one. The second one is build others. Be in conversation with them. So how do you do that? What's the habit attached to that? It's, some people will call it lead generation. Now I call it building others and being in conversation because sometimes lead generation, we tend to be like, ooh, yuck, I don't wanna do that, that's hard, right? Ooh, or, or that's, that's slimy, that's salesy, right? If you think of it like I am building other people by being in conversation with them, it takes all the ickiness out of it. And by the way, if that's not what you're doing in conversations, then it's no wonder that you maybe you don't like it. Because you as a genuine human, you have a hard time over a sustainable period of time or any time at all of not adding value to people, of not walking out of relationships and, and interactions that were positive, okay? So building other people, in other words, be in conversation with them, adding value to them, giving information to them, leading them, okay? So the next one. Now, now, if you were to look at your day, building yourself ought to come first thing. The very next thing after you've built, after you've built it, after you've built yourself, right? The very next thing ought to be building others. In other words, be getting into conversation with other people. By the way, if you're finding value in this, put value. Um, we'd love to, to just uh, get some feedback and again, share this with other people. If you're listening to the podcast afterwards, I strongly encourage you to, to, to DM me. Uh, as one of my mentors said, your feedback is my oxygen. I don't know if that's true. I actually have oxygen that isn't just from an audience, uh, but I will say it does matter. When I know, in fact, I just had a wonderful um, individual um, Lolly, I believe is how you pronounce her name, just said some really kind words. She's new to this group, this is successful real estate agents group, just said some super kind things. It fueled me, it gave me energy, it made me want to do even more. Um, so anyway, um, building other people. Let's continue on. Step number three, habit number three, okay, is to build systems. Keep in mind, I'm a builder. We're building today, folks. We're building great habits. Okay, building systems. Now there's some key areas in which I want you to be building systems, okay? Number one is gonna be around, let's make this a little bit prettier here. Building, the first system is on how you get the business, okay? What are your systems for getting the business? The next one, doing the business. What is your system for doing the business? Operations, what does it look like when you get a new listing? What does it look like when you, you know, when you, when you get a new client? What does it look like uh, when, you, when you go under contract? Like what is the system for doing the business? Do you have checklists in place? Because Here's the principle. If all of this resides in your brain, number one, you're never going to be able to turn it off. And number two, it's going to be inconsistent because even the best of us forget things. Even the best of us. You are limiting your capacity and your potential. Your potential to live, give, and serve abundantly, which by the way is my definition for thinking bigger, living, giving, and serving abundantly. You're limiting your potential. You're limiting your ability to reach that potential rather by not having systems in place. So a system around getting the business, a system around doing the business, a system around accounting for the business. Let me share with you a system that I have around accounting for the business. Whenever income hits my account, I know as a direct an automatic percentage, a certain amount immediately goes into my tax account. And an amount immediately goes into my profit account. An amount immediately goes into my owner's compensation account. And an amount immediately goes into my 
operating expense account. I don't have to question. And as a result, I know how much revenue I need to be producing based on what my current budget expenses are. Now, is, did that come naturally to me? No. That's stuff that I had to create because I wasn't great at it. But now that that system's in place, it happens automatically and it happens consistently. And I don't have to think about it, stress about it. It's a system that's in place. Okay. So a great habit is to always be evaluating your systems. Now I'm going to do a little plug here for the wonderful teammates with whom I have the ability to work. Part of what we do when you partner with us as a part of Think Bigger Real Estate, as part of one of our partner clients in Coaching Plus, is that you get us working together with you to get these systems in place. You don't have to come up with them. Think of them yourself. You, you partner. By the way, I'm, this is kind of a segue into another one of my, my key habits. But if you aren't great at that, you need to get a system in place. If you're not great at putting systems in place, then you need to partner with and find somebody who is, period. Because if you are limited by your, you will be limited by your systems. If your, if your systems are bad, then you will eventually be bad. You're only as strong as your weakest system. Keep that in mind. So building systems around this, also building systems around as your business progresses even further beyond the basic necessities of the business. You want to have a system around leading the business. And you want to have a system around exiting the business. These five things that I've just described here, by the way, are the five pillars of freedom that I teach, that I help our clients to live. Leading the business, exiting the business. When I say exit, I don't mean necessarily sell the business. It could be exit, exit for the evening. It could be exit the business for the weekend. It could be exiting the business for a midweek day off. And or it could be exiting the business as you move on to other ventures, okay? But actually having systems in place that help these things to come about, okay? That is habit number three is build systems. All right, let's move on to number four. Hopefully you're taking notes, getting value out of this. If you are, put in the comments. Uh, value, would love to hear it. Brad Eaton, thanks for your comment. Morning routine, yes. Um, love it, Kendall, thanks for being here. Um, again, if you're watching this live, let us know. We'd love to, to get, get your feedback. Always exciting. Okay, uh, number four, I want you to think about building brand. I actually had a podcast episode this week with one of the best brand builders in the business. His name is Josh Pitts. Services the lending industry at a very high level. Uh, some other very good friends of mine from Brandface. Uh, they've helped me to realize a couple of things is that number one, if you're not building, if you're not intentional about building your brand, you're building somebody else's brand. Now, some of you have email domains, you have uh, big corporate uh, companies that you work for, and you're carrying their banner. And I say, great, as long as you're completely aligned, but just know that at some point you might not be. I strongly encourage you to build a brand that is your personal brand. That, that brand that will always be yours, right? That you can adapt and pivot potentially to a new company, potentially to a new email domain, potentially to a new location in the country, okay? It behooves you to build a personal brand. Uh, one of my mentors was talking about how he worked for a very long time to build a business that was worth $100 million. Like it took him like a decade and a half. And he said, and I watched people who had already built a big personal brand like Conor McGregor. Uh, like Dwayne The Rock Johnson. And immediately they entered into a very similar industry. And within a matter of months, they had built multi centimillionaire, I don't know if I said that right, $100 million plus companies and even billion dollar companies because they built their brand first. When you have a focus on building personal brand, not highlighting just a house, not highlighting just a neighborhood, but highlighting your experience, your knowledge about that particular area, about that particular thing, and you become the expert, what happens is that brand becomes powerful. People buy into you and they want to be led by you. It's way more powerful to be led by a person, right? A personal brand, personal brand, than it is to be led by some company, 
Okay, people attach to other humans. That's how we're wired. So building personal brand. Okay. Now again, if you were to go back and look at the habits, just reviewing here, build yourself ought to come first thing in the morning. Very next thing ought to be building others through having conversations, generating new business opportunities by building other people. Okay. Very quickly, you need to be building systems that allow you as you're building new conversations and new business, very quickly, you will tap out unless you're building systems. Okay. And I would recommend, again, I'm going backwards here a little bit, but as you're building, you ought to have a time marked on the calendar weekly, if not at least monthly, where you're reviewing what held me back this month. What were the breakdowns? This is something that our partner clients get. They get um, monthly interaction to say, what was the biggest obstacle that kept you? What's your biggest goal? What's the biggest challenge you're facing this month? How can we help you? Right? So we have that built into our system to where we're helping you unlock these obstacles. But just know that building these systems is, is a critical thing that you need to be doing on a uh, if not weekly, at least monthly basis. And then again, at the at the at the 90 um, day planning sessions, which we highly recommend as well. Building brand ought to be done daily, right? You ought to be on a very daily, regular basis, not just putting out social media content, but you ought to be building personal brand, building authority, not for your ego's sake, but so that you have the ability to help more people. Okay. Building brand. Okay. People, the most successful people in the world have a habit of building personal brand. Number five is to build partnerships. Okay. Now I've spoken a little bit about what it looks like to partner with Think Bigger Real Estate. That is one form of partnership. Okay. So it could be coaching slash consulting partnerships. It could also be key vendors, right? We talked about building systems. This kind of parlays in with that, but finding key outsourced partners. Internal partners. Incredible people that are on your team that are helping you achieve at a high level. Okay, and, and, and lastly, one of my favorites is upstream partners. In other words, key professionals from other industries who have the ability to send you a lot of business frequently, recurringly, clients that you love working with. Okay, we specialize in helping you to grow and scale your warm market business doing that. But always looking to say, who can I partner with? I'm not saying give up ownership or equity in your business necessarily, right? At some point that might make sense. But what I am talking about is being willing to really partner with other people. Number six, we're getting there guys. Number six is to build momentum. I had a basketball coach in middle school and high school who would yell at us if we were not actively playing defense. And he would say, when we play great defense, we, great, we get momentum. And he said, momentum is the sixth, the sixth man on the field. Or the sixth man on the court. He called it the wrong sport. When you get big mo, that's what he call it. When you get big mo on your team, you can't be stopped. Big mo is the is momentum. And this is the principle that I want you to think about. Is that money loves speed. I was having a conversation today with a with a great agent. Her goals for the first year in her business are, are a million dollars gross commission income. And I totally think she can pull it off. She's like, wait, what do you mean? I thought it's good like if you close like six deals in your first year. It could be. It just depends on how fast you want to go. It just depends on how fast you want to go. I have other agents who I'll talk with. They're like, you know what? I don't know if we're quite ready to commit to go that fast. I don't know if I can partner. Now, that is not a... Uh, an audio editing uh, error that you're hearing there. That is me imitating the sloth from the movie Zootopia. Remember the sloth that worked at the DMV and he goes so slow. Sometimes we don't know it, but we're going so slow. We're so careful not to make a mistake that we don't actually ever 
create any value. We don't go fast enough. We need to actually just get in and get moving. The best kind of experience, the best kind of confidence comes by just getting some experience under our belt. Whether you're brand new in the business, running the business for 20 years and you're doing something new like starting to build personal brand, just get going, get moving. Money loves speed. Speed, guys, speed. Do it. Do more of it. Do it faster. And you will find yourself progressing at a faster rate. Build momentum is habit number six. Habit number seven is this. Build value. Now we hear this over and over, but I want to break this down and make this a little more tangible for you. Number one, I want you to think of building value in your offers. I'm not necessarily talking about when you're helping buyers make an offer on a home. It could be, but I'm talking about is how do people know, like what guarantee do people have that you're going to be great, that you're a great investment? I'll give you an example. Just today, we approved internally for all of our new coaching clients. If you don't double your money in the six months that you're working with us, I will personally refund you double your money. Right? That's a powerful offer. Now, why am I doing that? Because I have such confidence that will get you results that if you do what we tell you to do, that's an important characteristic for this to work. If you do what we tell you to do, you follow our coaching, that I will personally refund you twice what you paid just for, for taking your time if you don't double your results in the period of time that you're working with us. Okay. Now, do I have to do that? No. Am I confident that people will get results? Yes. And so I want people to know that. So I'm making a powerful offer because I feel completely confident that if you do everything we tell you to do, you're going to get results. So my question to you is, what are you doing to make your offer more powerful, to build value through the offer that you're creating? Okay, that's one way to build value. The other way is actually building assets. Okay, what are you doing to build assets. Now, I'm not talking about outside of your real estate business. I'm actually talking about inside your real estate business. What are you doing to build assets? Could be digital assets, right? Could be a portfolio, could be marketing pieces, but like build something to where at the end of the day, you have enterprise value. You actually have something to show for it at the end of the day. You have something. People say, tell me about your business. They're not just looking at you. Okay, personal brand and this go very closely together. But you're actually building assets in your business. And enterprise value is actually you have profit in your business. You charge enough that you actually have some profit at the end of the day. You actually can, can have something at the end of the day. Actually building enterprise value. Agents that have a habit of doing that are the most successful agents out there. You guys, I'm grateful that you've been here and listened to these seven habits. I appreciate you. In review, for those, again, that are listening and not able to see my screen, number one, build yourself. Number two, build others. Number three, build systems. Number four, build brand. Number five, build partnerships. Number six, build momentum. And number seven, build value, both in other people and inside your business. Grateful uh, to have you all here. Just know that again, if you're not inside of the Successful Real Estate Agents Facebook group, come join us. You're gonna miss out on tomorrow, which is gonna be a key summary sheet that is gonna be wildly helpful for you to implement these things. Um, and if by chance you're interested in taking me up on the offer to join our client partnership program, in which we have some amazing guarantees in which we partner with you. We don't just tell you what to do like you're hearing now. We do it with you. If you're interested in that, please reach out. We'd love to have a conversation with you to see if you're the right fit for what we're doing. Grateful for everybody. My final request of everyone listening here today, you know what it is, these three simple words, and they are go think bigger. Thank you guys. We will talk very soon. Appreciate you all. Have an amazing rest of your day.